I did a thing. I got on the wait list for the new Leica 50 millimeter Sumilux aspherical version two. I was told this could be many months on the waiting list before it became available. And I've been on the list for like 10 days or so. And they called me and said it was here. So I'm going to unbox and then put on my camera this new Sumilux 51.4. But I did something else that was very stupid. So I'm going on a trip in like three weeks. I'm gonna be gone for like 40 days. I wanted a 51.4 for this trip. And out of concerns that Leica was not gonna have a lot of these available in the beginning and after speaking with my local Leica store and some others, I was pretty much assured that it was gonna be a very hard chance to get one before this trip. So what did I do that was stupid? I actually bought a 51.4 version one from a guy on Facebook Marketplace. And ironically, it arrives today. But before that, I figured right now I've got the 51.4 Sumalux version two, version one, and I have a 50 Sumacron. Version one and the Sumacron, they're gonna be saying bye. But for fun, why don't we shoot these three lenses and see how they compare? So I guess I will go ahead and finish unboxing this one. Look at this packaging here, so simplistic. Of course, we got the paperwork underneath. Take a look here. There it is, 51.4. Now I'm gonna be waiting around for the other one to come in with UPS. Lens number two has come in. I still kind of feel dumb. I'm a pretty patient person normally. And I was operating on the belief that I would not have the 50 Sumo Lux in time for my trip. And look at this. Here's the used one I bought, the older one. It's ridiculous. Of course, I'm just gonna flip this lens. So you'll see it on the uh, Facebook Marketplace or maybe you're watching and it's recent and maybe you've decided that you want this lens. You're welcome to it. Little used lens inspection here. It's the one he said it was, so that's important. It's good. It's like brand new. Guy said he hardly ever used it. All right, so now I have 250 Sumo Luxes, but the cool thing is we get to do a shootout and see version one and version two, what's been improved and if it's worth the premium from going from the used one, which you can find several thousand dollars less than the new one. And just for the fun of it, we'll also throw in the 50 Sumacron and compare these three 50s. So let's go have some fun now that everything's here. Okay, so I'm out here with my friend Jen. She's gonna be our model tonight while we test out these lenses. We're out here in a California golden hour. It's nice and windy, and we're gonna walk up the hills right here, and we're gonna find a spot and take some photos. And before we do that, just a quick shout out to Clever Supply Company and this awesome sling. It is insane what I've gotten here, and yet it is nice and balanced, which is the, the thing that I look for in bags and slings. And this is the first one I've ever used that really does not move as I walk around. It's awesome. But in this, I have my Leica M10R with the 50 Sumalux attached. I have the version one Sumilux in here. I have a 50 Sumacron in here and I also have the Sony a7R5 with the 50 which is a big lens on this as well. What? All inside of this. Look it's all in here. I'm Pretty impressed. awesome. I'm carrying uh, every 50 that I own for the shoot because I figured you know even though we're just comparing the new Sumilux and the old Sumilux why not just throw two other 50s on there and just see how they all compare. You know when you got to go through a cattle gate you know you're in farmland. But I mean, look at this. It doesn't get much better, does it? Got it. <laughs> so we're technically walking on a, a horse trail. It's always exciting when the horses come. How's it going, guys? You wanna go up here? There's kind of like a little path right here, you see it?
Okay, so we looked around and we found this as our spot. So we're gonna shoot right in here. I like the framing and composition of what's behind us. We're gonna start with the 50 Sumalux A Spherical 2. We're gonna switch that to the one. We're gonna switch to the Sumacron. And then we're gonna, for fun, throw the Sony and the 50 1.2 GM on there. I'm gonna shoot everything at the same F-stop. So I'm gonna do F1.4 for the two A-spherical Sumaluxes and for the Sony. And then I'm gonna do F2 for the Sumacron because that is as low as it goes. Then we'll do F4, then we're gonna do F8. So we're gonna do three shots per lens, four lenses, 12 shots total. So we'll also be looking at the close focusing capabilities of the new Sumalux because that's one of its selling points is that you can actually focus closer to your subject. Now, I'm gonna attempt that with Jen. The thing about close focusing with the Sumalux is that you can't actually use the rangefinder to close focus. You have to use either the Visoflex, which I don't use, or use the back LCD, which I hate to use. So I'm gonna give it a try and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so you got to take a look at some of the photos in line as I was shooting them. And rather than going through and comparing them on video where depending upon the quality or the device in which you're watching this video may not fully tell you the entire truth, I've added a gallery of these shots in a blog on my website. My website is super easy. It's Dave, my name, dot online. If you were to click or tap the link below, it'll take you right to the blog where I have all of these images for your personal research and comparison to make your own conclusions. I just went through all of the photos myself and look, I've been known to be wrong on this channel before. Remember my M10R video? <laughs> But as I'm looking at these images, I feel like I focused better at 1.4 on the version one of the Sumalux, not the newest one. But that said, that was probably my technique and my miss and has nothing to do with the lenses. Overall, I honestly feel like these lenses are basically identical, except for the ability to focus extremely close for a rangefinder lens. In version two, the newer one has 11 aperture blades instead of nine, but really like, I don't think most people would notice the difference because nine is more than adequate to get very smooth and round bokeh balls. And so 11 may not even be that big of a difference. So the question is, am I happy that I purchased the new one, even though I also purchased the old one? And I, I am planning to still sell the old one and recoup what I spent and keep the new one. 
But if I would have gotten the old one and new one and had a chance to compare them, I probably just would have bought the old one to begin with. So why not sell the new one? Well, two reasons. One is I'm in Leica for the long haul and I imagine 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, this 50 Sumalux will still retain a lot of the value that it currently has, much like the version one has retained a great value over the past 15 years. Reason two is a point that I made several videos ago and that is support your local camera shop. I know that it's expensive, it can cost more money than buying in other places. I love my local camera shop and they do so much for me without ever asking for money, which is kind of funny when you think about a local shop, but they've done a lot for me. Even just the peace of mind they give me whenever I'm, I'm hanging out there and talking to them about some of the gear that I've bought, used, or from another person and they're still walking me through it, standing by it, helping me do warranties when needed. They're great. And so, yeah, I bit off quite a big bite by buying the new Sumalux from my local camera shop, but I would do it again. The Sumacron, it's been good, but if I need a 50, I'm sticking with the Lux. And of course, Sony nails it every time with autofocus, but I'll sum it up like this. Shooting with my Sony after shooting so much with Leica for the last many months, Sony feels more and more like a computer with a lens, and it is a fantastic machine. But I don't know, I just don't feel like an artist much when I use it, but I definitely feel good when I'm using the Leica. And honestly, that's what this channel has been about. Like this channel has been built on my Leica journey. And so uh, I don't plan on stopping that. All right, guys, check out the link below. Go look at these images for yourself. Make your own conclusions, but then come back, leave a comment and tell me what you think. If you think that the upgrade is worth it or that the new version outdoes the older version at all. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your ongoing support. Every interaction that we have on this channel means a lot to me and every DM conversation we have and the connections we make, they mean everything to me. So be sure to hit me up at the links below, check out the blog, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, and I will see you next time.